This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. In one old English graveyard, this epitaph is carved on one of the ancient headstones. It reads, Remember, man that passeth by, as thou art now, so once was I, and as I am, so thou must be. Prepare thyself to follow me. But a visitor came along and scribbled these words underneath. To follow these, not my intent, unless I know which way thou went. There is the vital issue in the living of human life. Finding and maintaining your sense of direction. Which way are you going? What is your purpose in life? God can give you a purpose in life if you will seek the will of God. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive. There was one statistician who declared, every time I breathe, a man dies. And someone suggested a better mouthwash. But the facts are that every nine seconds, someone is born in the United States of America, and every 21 seconds, someone dies. Yet life is more than just being born and then dying. There can be a deeper meaning to every day of your life, every moment of your existence. If you will give yourself to a purpose which is larger than yourself, if you will give yourself to the very purposes of God and say and mean, it is my will, God, that your will be done. Align and synchronize your mind, your thinking, your life, and your will with the mind, thinking, and life and will of God. So many people are trying so hard to live the life that isn't, that they forget to live the life that is. They don't live in the here and the now. Be real with yourself. Be real with others and real with God. And Mauro Lindbergh in her book, Gift from the Sea, wrote, Maturity is shedding your hypocrisy. Learn humility. You don't have to try to be God. There already is one. Know the joy of glorifying, lauding, and honoring God in all your ways. The joy of worshiping God. Of for a moment forgetting about yourself and thanking the creator, the author, the genesis of the entire universe, of all it is, ultimately. And thanking God, who is your loving Father, who loves you and cares about you, who knows you, and who wants good for you, who has forgiveness and mercy and a new way of life for you. This is a true story. I was reading a newspaper article about this man in Encore Township, Michigan, who had just finished building all of his new home, except for the roof, when he suddenly discovered that he had been putting up his house through these months on somebody else's lot. The structure was almost completed, but he found at the last moment he was building it on the wrong land. And is there really any greater tragedy in human life than for a man or a woman's life to be almost completed in the latter years of life, in old age, only to find out that he or she has been building on the wrong lot, that what that man or woman built his life on was the wrong principle or the wrong idea, the wrong concept, selfishness or materialism, greed, fear, anger, skepticism. I urge you, build your life not on the wrong lot, but on the right lot. Build your life on truth and beauty and goodness and love, love for God and love for other human beings. There was a certain young housewife who was, with many tears, relating all of her problems to an older friend of hers. And her friend said, but have you prayed about your problems? The young woman nodded her head, yes. She said, I've prayed about them, but when I'm through praying, all of my troubles are still there. They're still with me. And her older friend smiled. She said, all you've been doing is worrying in the presence of God. She said, the next time you pray, really trust God, really trust him. Prayer is not just worrying on your knees. 
Prayer needs to be enveloped in faith and hope and the trusting of God's will for you and living in love and living in faith, giving your life to God and knowing that God will bless your life and renew your spirits and reinvigorate you with the joy of living as the son or daughter of God you are and the brother or sister to every other person on this planet you were born to be. Did you ever wonder why doctors write their prescriptions for medicines in Latin? There's a reason. It's because scientific men and women all around the world have studied and learned Latin. So you can take a Latin prescription and have it filled in London, England, or Paris, France, or Berlin, Germany, Istanbul, or Cairo, or Calcutta, anywhere, Hong Kong, worldwide. It's understood, and the true prescription for the living of a really joyous human life is likewise written in a universal language. It is the language of love. It's loving God and loving people. The two great commandments, they've been called the laws of love. These are the secrets of living truly joyously, a new life, a renewed, a transformed life. I remember hearing once about an old alcoholic who wanted to quit drinking, and he pledged to a friend of his who was a minister. Pledged to him, he promised that he would never again take another drink of liquor, but that very same evening, this old alcoholic came back, and he had the shakes, and he was trembling, went back to his friend, the minister, and he said, if I don't have a drink tonight, I'm going to die. The minister looked at him and said, well, then, go home and die. But what he meant was not a cruel thing. What he meant was, let your old nature die. Let that craving in you die away and wither away so that the good can grow. Whatever your problem, weed out the weeds to make space for the seeds, for the seeds of new growth and new potentials in your life, which God has for you, waiting for you. If only you will turn your life and your will over to God and say, God, it is my will that yours be done. Acknowledge that you find your life unmanageable in many aspects, but there is a power greater than yourself who can do for you what you cannot do for yourself, who can make all things new, because you can find and come to know God as your father and as your friend, a God with whom you can talk and share your life every day, every morning when you rise and every evening when you go to bed, and all during the day. You can have a vital sense of companionship with the very creator of the universe, because God loves you, and God has a plan for this planet and a purpose for your life. And you will live forever in a great adventure of finding, knowing, and serving God. This universe is more a university. It's a place of learning and exploring and discovery. Oh, it's going to be exciting. Whatever your age is, give your life to God and begin to live as the son or daughter of God you are in the quest for perfection. This doesn't mean that you achieve instantaneous perfection. Abraham Lincoln once said, it has been my experience that folks who, <laughs> folks who have no vices also have very few virtues. That's what Abraham Lincoln said. So if you're not perfect, then neither am I, neither is any other human being I've ever met. None of us are perfect. But if you will give your life to God, God will make something out of your life. You may not think there's much to give to God, if you give your life to God, but God will make something of what you give to him. God will control your vices and expand your virtues and will make your life truly worthwhile because God's power is the power of the Spirit and a fragment of God's very Spirit indwells your mind, is there with you and within you this moment if you will dare to believe it because God loves you and has given of himself to be with you and within you. And that is the source of real peace and real joy and authentic happiness. Do you remember Dr. Thomas Dooley? He was a famous jungle doctor, as he was called, who started hospitals to treat natives in jungle areas around the world. But he had cancer. This was many years ago, but in his last days, 
The thoughts of Dr. Dooley turned with more and more love to the thought of God who gave him strength and peace in life. This 34-year-old cancer victim, Dr. Dooley, sensed the approaching end of his life, and just six weeks before he died, the jungle doctor wrote these words to a friend in the United States. He wrote two things prompt my note to you. The first is that when my cancer acts up, and it is certainly acting up now, I turn inward a bit. Less do I think of my hospitals around the world, of the 94 doctors working with me, of fundraising and so forth. More do I think, rather, of the one divine doctor, God, and of my own personal fund of grace. Is it enough, I ask myself? The storms around me do not matter. The winds within me do not matter. Nothing human or earthly can touch me, wrote Dr. Dooley. And listen to this. He wrote, a wilder storm, a wilder storm of peace gathers in my heart. What seems unpossessable, I can possess. What seems unfathomable, I can fathom. What is unutterable, I can utter. Because, he wrote, because I can pray, I can communicate. And then he asks, how do people endure anything on earth if they cannot have God? Whatever it is that you are enduring in your life, I urge you, give your life to God. May you find God now, in this moment, listening to this radio broadcast or this cassette if you're hearing it on tape. Because God awaits your decision. The living God awaits your decision to turn to him and come to know him and find the peace which passes all understanding, the joy which knows no limitations, the satisfaction which cannot be described on a microphone or a broadcast. But you can come to find these things and know these things beginning here and now if in faith you will turn to God with all your heart and begin to live your life as you really were born to live, as a child of God, a son or daughter of God, which is who and what you really are. For free li- Write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written pieces of literature on finding God, getting to know God, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. They're all in a booklet titled Growing Spiritually. And it's yours without cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us. We also have one titled Life After Death. What happens when you die and what happens afterward? Write for this. Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.